This video is on section 2-4 on deductive reasoning. By the end of this video, you should know what deductive reasoning is and be able to use the law of detachment and the law of syllogism, which are two types of deductive reasoning, to make conclusions. This video also covers um, two geometry standards, G.1.1 and G.6.1. Deductive reasoning is the process of reasoning logically from one or more general statements to reach a conclusion. What that means is that deductive reasoning is where you're, you take one or more facts or statements and you are able to come up with some conclusion from those statements or facts. Okay, so this video talks about two types of deductive reasoning. The first is the law of detachment. And in the law of detachment, we, ha we know that um, we're given a conditional statement that's true. And um, we know that the hypothesis is true. And what we can conclude is that the conclusion is also true. Okay. Now let me give you an example so that makes a little more sense. <clears throat> if a student gets an A on a final exam, then the student will pass the course. We are assuming that that statement is true. Okay. Um, Felicia got an A on her history final exam. Okay. Now notice that the situation with Felicia um, models exactly what the hypothesis says. Okay, that Felicia um, is a student who got an A on her final exam. Okay, so because this conditional is true, um, it must be true that Felicia will pass the course. Okay, and that is a conclusion we can make, and what, the, what we're using is the law of detachment. Here's another example. Um, if a ray divides an angle into two congruent angles, then the ray is an angle bisector. That's a true statement um, describing an angle bisector. Ray RS divides angle ARB so that angles, um, angle ARS is congruent to angle SRB. Well, uh, let's draw a picture so we can see what's going on in this picture. Here's an angle, and it's angle A, R, B, and R, S divides it so that A, R, S is congruent to S, R, B. Okay. <clears throat> now, the question is, is does this statement... Um, does that describe the hypothesis of our conditional statement? Um, is RS a ray that divides an angle into two congruent angles? And yes, it is, because it divides it into two congruent angles. So what we can con conclude is that the ray, RS, is an angle bisector. So I have my a true conditional. I know the hypothesis is true. I can conclude using the law of detachment that the conclusion must also be true. Example three: If it is Friday, then I eat pizza. Okay, we're assuming that for this person, um, that every Friday of the year they always eat pizza. Okay, we're assuming that that's a true conditional statement. <clears throat> the next statement we're given is I am eating pizza. This person is eating pizza. Now. I know that we want to say, well, then it must be Friday. But that's not what the conditional says. The conditional says that if it's Friday, then he, he, um, they're eating pizza. Okay? Um, it could be true that this person eats pizza on, you know, every Wednesday and Friday, or um, this person happens to eat pizza um, on Saturday as well. Okay? So just because they're eating pizza, it doesn't mean it's Friday. Okay? Because this um, statement 
does not model the hypothesis. Okay, so what can you conclude? The answer is nothing. Nothing more than we're already given. We know that it's a true statement that if it's Friday, then they're eating pizza, and we know that they are eating pizza, but there's nothing else that we're not already told that we can conclude. Okay, um, the other law <clears throat> is the law of syllogism, okay? And in the law of syllogism, we are given two conditional statements. There's one here and one here. Two true conditional statements. Okay, and one thing that's very important about these two statements is that um, one of them, um, one of the parts is, you know, is the conclusion in one statement and the hypothesis of the other. Okay, um, and it, when that happens, we have a P implies Q, and then Q implies R, and so we can kind of skip that step and go directly from P to R. Okay, let me show you with an example. Um, if it is July, then you are on summer vacation. Okay, we're assuming that's a true statement. And if you are on summer vacation, then you will work at a smoothie shop. Okay, that's a true statement. So what you can conclude is that if it's July, then you will work at a smoothie shop. Okay, so we've we kind of use this law of syllogism to jump over the fact that you're on summer vacation. Okay, but it's true that if it's July, you're on summer vacation, and if you're on summer vacation, then you work at a smoothie shop. So um, the law of syllogism can jump from um, the hypothesis of one statement to the conclusion of the other, skipping over that middle step. Example one, if you play football, then you will get sweaty. If you get sweaty, then you should take a shower. What can you conclude? Well, um, if you play football, I'll call that P, then you will get sweaty. I'll call that um, Q. So when I'm given it, I'm given P to Q. If you get sweaty, now getting sweaty is Q, and then you should take a shower is a new statement, so I'll call that R. And I'm also given Q to R. Okay, so they match up the way they should, and so I can go from P to R. Um, so I can conclude that if you play football, then you should take a shower. Okay, example two, if a bird is an ostrich, then it is the fastest bird on land. If a bird is an ostrich, then it is the largest of all birds. Okay, if a bird is an ostrich, I'll call that P, then it is the fastest bird on land, I'll call that Q. If a bird is an ostrich that looks a lot like P, then it is the largest of all birds. That's a new statement. I'll call that one R. So what I'm given is P to Q and P to R. Now there's not the matching up like we had in example one. And so what can you conclude? Nothing. There's nothing that I'm not already given that I can conclude. Example three, if you do gymnastics, then you are flexible. If you do ballet, then you are flexible. What can you conclude? If you do gymnastics, um, I'll call that P, then you are flexible, Q. Um, if you do ballet, that's a new statement, R, then you are flexible, that's a lot like Q. We're given P to Q and R to Q. Okay, again, I don't have the linking up um, or the matching like I did before, and so I can't conclude anything that I'm not already told. Example four. Socrates is a man. All men are mortal. So Socrates, um, I'll call that P, and a man, 
is Q, and all men are mortal. So P, Socrates, is a man, and all men are mortal. I can conclude, I, now since there is the matching up of Q, I can jump from P to R, um, and I can conclude that Socrates is mortal. All right, um, now some more application. If possible, use the law of detachment to make a conclusion. If it's not possible to conclusion, tell why, okay? Now we're jumping back to the law of detachment. Um, if a triangle is an obtuse triangle, then the triangle has one obtuse angle. That's a true conditional statement. And what I'm told is that triangle ABC is an obtuse triangle. Now, the second statement we're given mirrors um, the hypothesis of my conditional statement. Okay, and since this is a true conditional, I can conclude that triangle ABC um, has one obtuse angle. Um, if possible, use the law of detachment to make a conclusion. If not possible to make a conclusion, tell why. If the light is red, then the car must stop. The car stops. Okay, we're assuming this is a true conditional statement. Um, what I'm given in this second statement um, does not match the hypothesis. It matches the conclusion. Um, and so I can't conclude that the light is red because the car could stop for some other reason. If possible, use the law of syllogism to make a conclusion. If it is not possible to make a conclusion, tell why. If it is snowing today, then school will be canceled. So this is, I'll call this one P, and this one Q. If school is canceled, then the test will be postponed. School is canceled is Q. Test will be postponed is, I'll call that one R. So I'm given P to Q and Q to R. So I can jump from P to R. And so what I can conclude is um, if it is snowing today, then the test will be postponed. Okay. Um, if it is possible, use the law of syllogism to make a conclusion. If it is not possible to make a conclusion, tell why. Um, if it is cold, then people will wear jackets. Color one P, Q. If it is raining, um, that's a new statement, R then the people will wear jackets. That's like Q. So I have P to Q and R to Q. So I don't have the linking because they're both pointing at Q. And so I can't conclude um, anything that I'm not already told. Okay, one last kind of thing to point out um, is that the difference between making a valid conclusion and truth, okay? Um, all math teachers are over seven feet tall. Mr. D is a math teacher. Therefore, Mr. D is over seven feet tall, okay? That's a valid conclusion, but it's not true, okay? So if you make conclusions based on incorrect conditional statements, um, you can make valid conclusions, but they won't necessarily be true, okay? So don't confuse um, truth with making a valid conclusion. Okay, this visit video is on deductive reasoning um, and also on the law of detachment and the law of syllogism. And I hope that after some practice, you're able to use these laws um, to make some valid conclusions.